Hello, I'm Mohamed Janara. In today's video, we will be reviewing anatomy relating to the skull base and the major skull vault sutures. These are axial images through the level of the skull base. You'll note that these are bone enhanced acquisitions to help accentuate the bony quality and bony texture. I've annotated one half of the image so you can refer to the other side for reference. In blue, I've highlighted the globe and from the posterior aspect of the globe, as indicated by the red cylindrical slash rectangular structure, you can see the optic nerve heading towards the orbital apex. The optic canal forms the end of the orbital apex and is highlighted by the green lines. If we go back down to the skull base, we're now demonstrating the foramen magnum. This, if you like, is the big space at the level of the skull base through which the intracranial structures pass through to enter the lower part of the body. Here is the foramen magnum. If we go up one slice, we'll now start to see different structures. Let's have a look at the carotid canal. This is the right temporomandibular joint and directly next to it, you can see a foramen within the skull base. This is the right carotid canal. Here's the left temporomandibular joint and adjacent to it, the left carotid canal. If we go up one slice, you will see that the right carotid canal takes the turn anteromedially and extends up adjacent to the sphenoid sinus shown here. This segment of the carotid artery as it runs along this horizontal foramen is called the lateral segment. And that's because this area is called the foramen lacerum. Here's the right foramen lacerum, and here's the left. One slice further, and you'll see that actually the carotid artery lies very close to the sphenoid sinuses, shown here. This is the right carot internal carotid artery, and here's the left internal carotid artery, very close to the sphenoid sinuses. It's perhaps useful at this stage to give you a point of clinical relevance. It's good to tell the ENT surgeons if you do head and neck radiology, how close this artery is to the sinus wall, because if they do surgery, you can see that actually this bit of bone is the only barrier between their drill and a catastrophic bleed if they manage to affect this vessel. If we go one step further cranial still, we'll encounter two structures that look like sort of open-ended triangles. Here on the left, you can see part of the open-ended triangle, and here on the right, you can see a similar appearance. These represent the internal acoustic meati. We'll talk a bit more about the contents of these canals or foramina on a later video where we discuss the temporal bone anatomy. But there are some important nerves that enter into the internal acoustic meati at this level. If we have a look at the imaging in video format, it should help to reinforce the points that we've just raised. Starting at the level of the skull base and working our way superiorly, you'll then see the right globe here, and there's a left. The right optic nerve heads towards the orbital apex and passes through the right optic canal. There's a left optic canal. If we head back down to the skull base, you'll see the foramen magnum the conduit between the intracranial structures and the rest of the torso. As the imaging slowly proceeds in a cranial direction, you'll notice the right and left carotid canals at the level of the temporomandibular joints. Note that as these canals head anteromedially, they form the foramen lacerum, the horizontal foramen along which the carotid artery lies. The internal carotid artery lies very close to the sphenoid sinuses as we discussed earlier. And as we go up, slices even still, you'll see the open-ended triangle of the internal acoustic meati. To best demonstrate the sutural anatomy, here we have 3D surface reconstructions of the brain. You can see the coronal suture extending across the midline and towards the patient's left-hand side here. From it arises the sagittal suture, which heads posteriorly. We will swing the imaging around to show you the sagittal suture in a bit more detail. Here the patient is starting to head towards that direction and their nose is going to eventually point to the top of their screen. 
you see the coronal suture there and the sagittal suture arises from it and extends posteriorly. As it does so, it gives rise to two further sutures, a left lambdoid suture, which you can see here, and a right lambdoid suture, which you can see here. Let's have another look at that sagittal suture. Here it is, heading anteriorly. And there's a coronal suture seen once again. To show you this on another patient, and to show you that the anatomy is usually the same, although normal variants do exist. Here is patient number two. You'll see the orbits here, and so they're facing towards you. There's a coronal suture demonstrated once again. Here is the right side of the coronal suture, and there's the left. As the image rotates, you'll see the sagittal suture extending up towards the posterior aspect of the patient's fault. You can ignore these over to the side of your image. They're just artifact from the reconstruction. As we swing the image around, you see the lambdoid suture entering to view here. That's the right lambdoid suture arising from the sagittal suture. You can see it clearly here, extending over towards the periauricular region or the region around the right ear. And on an exactly similar note, here's the left lambdoid suture extending towards the left ear. Thanks for watching. I trust this was useful for you. Please get in touch if you have any further or specific queries.